Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this video I will attempt to recreate the Mars InSight mission. This was an early attempt, I hadn't actually tested everything yet. So we're going to have a few flaws, but we're going to have fewer flaws than I had during the Mars InSight livestream while Mars InSight was landing on Mars. Uh, for instance, uh, while this is obviously a wayward Atlas V rocket, I had severe trouble getting the rocket to even get off the launch pad during the live stream uh, due to a weird issue with one of the parts that I had configured here. So for Mars InSight I had said that I would not make a model of it and I didn't uh, but I did find a NASA model of it. NASA has 3D models on the web and I decided that since they had been nice enough to make a Mars InSight model I would import it into Kerbal Space Program. Uh, obviously I thought that that would be easier than it turned out to be and the particular part that has an issue is the cruise section uh, the top bit and for some reason even though there's an attachment node that others the rest of the mission is supposed to attach to um, the stuff on top tends to sink in to the part for reasons I don't understand and that for other reasons I don't understand prevented the rocket from launching uh, so what I've done is surface attached the cruise section instead of using that attachment node and that seems to work out fine. Um, that little wiggle on the launch aside, that's probably for other reasons. So I did finally get to launch it. We are launching out of Vandenberg as Mars InSight was launched and launching southward. And here we go, the separation of the first stage and ignition of the Centaur stage. I'm not too, too sure why they launch out of Van Vandenberg except maybe for convenience because it's closer to JPL and everything uh, where Mars InSight itself is made. Uh, it does take more Delta V to transfer to Mars from Vandenberg than from Cape Canaveral but uh, we do have enough Delta V left over after making orbit which is what the rocket is doing here. The rocket is from KK Launchers Pack and um, though the fairings are procedural fairings. Here's reignition of the Centaur on our Trans Mars injection. As you can see, about 500 meters per second more than a typical Trans Mars injection. So we're waiting for shutdown here and then I'll use the RCS on the Centaur stage in order to make further corrections. We do have two Marco CubeSats on board, though um, they have a vigorous separation from the Centaur stage, which I wish they didn't. But I had turned down the decoupling force and everything, but it's still too powerful for them. They're only 13.5 kilograms a piece. They're at the bottom of the Centaur stage. Here we go. So here I go for separation. And there we go. And it just shot off like a cannon. There it goes. There's, there's a CubeSat for you. Uh, so it's going to have to correct this problem and I did put more fuel than it ought to have inside of it it should only have six liters tops well really probably four liters tops the whole thing is six liters in size but um, I put more a little bit more than well okay 15 liters all right and that was mainly to do corrections like this it's not supposed to have to do that the little thrusters are supposed to just do orientation stuff not make corrections like this but uh, when I've got the decoupler shooting them off like this, I need a little bit more ex more fuel in order to make the correction. So thankfully, I had the foresight for that. Uh, this is my own model of the CubeSats. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that. But I have been made aware that there is another model of the Marco CubeSats available on the forums. So you might want to check that out. I, I don't have a link to that, though. OK, well. On the corrections, we don't get them as close to Mars as I would like, but they both do have Mars trajectories. And then we had to correct the trajectory for Mars inside itself. At first, I do that with the Centaur Stages RCS, but it also has a decoupler that will throw things off. So ultimately, I have to use the RCS on the Mars InSight mission. And I'll show you that in a moment after we decouple. So there's a payload adapter at the top there, but I'm using a procedural fairing otherwise. And uh, let's look at the mission here. There's a few parts of the heat shield. There's the shell part. That's the cruise section. And it's got the solar panels for the trip there. There's also a little instrument unit on the side of it. 
and uh, inside of course is the lander itself. The um, cruise section has a command module and also electric charge, but no fuel. Uh, all the fuel is actually in the Mars InSight lander itself, and it's actually piped out to the shell. Uh, the, basically, RCS thrusters shoot their thrust through the shell while it's connected to the shell. So, uh, basically, that's how it is. You might need to rotate the lander in the shell in order to line up the RCS port, uh, but not really. I mean, if you want to just plop it in, that's fine too, but uh, if you want to be fancy about it, you'll line up the little RCS ports with the locations on the shell where they're supposed to be coming out of, but it won't be a big difference. Anyway, it is not necessary. There is also a part that I did not configure from NASA, that is this Phoenix Drogue Parachute. And that's because they didn't have the Drogue Parachute with the model, and I just used the one from the Phoenix Lander by Lionhead Aerospace, and that works fine. So it'll just attach to the top node there, and um, you need to surface attach the cruise section on top of that parachute, and everything will be fine. So here I am using the little RCS thrusters on the shell to further adjust our approach to Mars, and everything looks good. Now the heat shield loading on Mars Insight is really, really low. Much lower than any of the Mars missions I've done for my own purposes, my own design. And uh, so we're not expecting much ablation at all, or even heat as such. Uh, they're very protective of their landers. And actually the aeroshell is not that heavy altogether, so it's okay. If it was heavier, that would be more burdensome. I put 72 ablator, but we're not going to use any of it. Here we're going to release the aeroshell by decoupling from the drogue chute, again from uh, the Lionhead Aerospace Phoenix lander. And uh, we are going to arm the drogue chute, and we're ready to go. Now I sized the aeroshell, there is a gap there, but there is supposed to be a difference between the upper diameter of the shell and uh, the parachute diameter. But um, the shell is actually sized a little bit bigger than it ought to be to give room for the InSight mission so especially so that the InSight mission doesn't collide with the heat shield uh, though I, I laugh because the heat shield comes to bite us in the end anyway I'm sorry spoilers uh, but um, yep here we go orienting properly Mars's atmosphere begins at 125 kilometers in real solar system so we are now in the atmosphere and I've turned RCS off because It'll hold orientation just fine as it is right now. We just have to make sure that we don't accidentally go into the atmosphere nose first, in which case it will not hold orientation properly. So here we go. As you can see, I sort of decided to cut down on the seven minutes of terror by physical time warp. <laughs> there aren't that many parts here, so even with 3x physical time warp, we're mostly in green until the heat effects actually start out. And I decided to take myself out of the time warp while we get the heat effects and the high g-forces and everything. And again, as you can see, capture occurs without any issue, no thermometer readings. I did test this by bringing it into the atmosphere of Earth, and there it had more problems. <laughs> so, uh, but Earth does produce more heat. We generally re-enter faster at Earth than we do here. It's a thicker atmosphere at Earth. So, yeah. Anyway, but it did fine here. And... We are getting ready. There we go. Drogue shoot deployment. I set it to 8 kilometers for the initial depo deployment and 2.5 kilometers for the full deployment. That might be a little bit low now. And I think uh, if I were to do this again, I would definitely set that higher. I think that would be a good thing. And also I would carry a slightly heavier parachute. You can configure this uh, Phoenix Lander drogue chute using real chutes. If you're using real chutes and realism overhaul. So yeah, that's a good idea because of that. Whack. Um, a heavier parachute would have slowed us down more and given us more drag so that the heat shield didn't come back to bite us. Now, here we go, the RCS thrusters orienting us. It has 12 nozzles at the bottom for the main engines and 8 RCS thrusters. So, 
The thing is, I've already ignited the engines and you don't see a plume because I messed up on the plume. And it's also an interesting question about how much thrust they're supposed to have. I've combined, uh, their combined thrust right now is 2.64 kilonewtons, but I'm not sure that's right. And maybe if somebody could tell me how much it is, I can correct that so that we can slow down more vigorously and perhaps not die. Uh, so unfortunately, my attempt here at Mars Insight failed, but I will link the parts in the video description so that perhaps you can do a better job. I do like to publicize my testing so that I give people hope <laughs> and uh, give them a chance to actually complete the mission properly without uh, being beaten out to it to the punch by me. And that's there's no risk of that happening here, as the heat shield is not infinite gliding or anything. Um, it just settles down. It's got a lot of drag to it, and maybe it should have less drag to it, but it is what it is. Obviously the collider is just fine. That was a uh, proper collision. Uh, no questioning that part of it, but yeah. Yeah, uh, need to work on uh, execution and maybe helping out the thrusters a bit. There is no reaction wheel in the realism overhaul version of these parts but there is in the stock one. So the configuration, of course, in stock is a little bit different. Everything uses mod propellant in the stock version, and uh, the thrusters are still 2.6. It's actually the same power so and the same mass. So um, if you're facing the same gravity, you're going to have the same thing, but you're probably going to have more delta V to work with. So anyway, but uh, there's Mars Insight for you, not, well, okay, not exactly, but I'll try and make a nice cinematic version that actually has it working out later on, but I decided to give the parts a try. I need to fix that plume. I'll try and do that before I zip up the package that I put in the video description. If I fail, then I need some advice about how to fix that, but uh, otherwise everything seems to be working reasonably well. I have no idea about that uh, issue with the cruise section and why I was having the problem, just surface attach that and then it'll be fine. It's a little bit of a hassle, but anyway, on that note, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.